All right, we got a lot of uh, shows to talk about here today, including the Impact Wrestling pay-per-view, SmackDown, UFC, and more. So I guess we should start with Impact, since we let's had... start with UF- let's start with UFC. Cause that was Usually like, we do all the pro wrestling first, then we get into that UFC. Yeah, but the UFC, sh- the, but the UFC show was like great. I actually, SmackDown was really. It was good an too. exciting show, but at the same time, we also had the AW World Heavyweight Champion pin the Impact World Heavyweight Champion in a six okay. man. Okay, oh, okay, we could do where that. Where I might add, it was a really good show. That was a good match. It was a very good match, and you had basically it was a six man, but five of those people worked for Impact. So you very easily could have had an Impact guy pin an Impact guy, and nobody from Impact would have beaten anybody from AW or vice versa. Yeah, but Kenny was going to have to win. It don't. It didn't. It didn't make sense. I mean, because the whole thing's to build up Kenny Omega and Rich Swan. But I was surprised that he pinned Rich Swan. I thought he was going to pin Saban. Um, I was very surprised because. At but the end I. Of but the day, but he had. He, he had. He had to win. I mean, there was that. There was, I mean, he absolutely had to win the match. I mean, there's you know again because that's part of the deal, and also because he's Kenny Omega, and this is his year, and he's supposed to be you know beating everyone this year. So, um, but I mean, I get him beating Rich Swan. It makes sense. You know, I, I'm. Sh- I would presume that the april impact pay-per-view will be uh, kenny omega and rich swan title versus title um i can't imagine kenny omega doesn't end up with the impact title at some point i, I mean in the, if they have that match i mean well sure maybe- but at the end of the day we're 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 gonna get in this situation where you've got this deal going back and forth and kenny omega's beaten rich swan they're they're the next pay-per-view kenny omega's his logo is basically on the the graphic, so he's surely going to work that show. Well, it should and, be with Rich Swan because yeah, and since he pin. pinned the champion, he probably should be the championship match. Yeah, and I mean, if he wins, I mean that's where it should go for now. But ultimately, looking down the road, I mean, how does Impact Wrestling get their championship back? Who's going to beat Kenny Omega? Is Kenny Omega going to have to lose the AEW title he'll, before he'll they let the, him do the job? He'll have to, he'll have, I, I would think he would have to lose the AEW title first, and then he could do the job in Impact, yeah. But I don't think, you know, I think Don Callis is going to want to keep him um, with that with that title. I mean, the longer he's the champion, the better it is for, for Impact. I mean, as long as he's the champion, there's going to be a lot more eyes on Impact. So um, him being the champion is the best thing, unless... Unless they don't want to do that, but I can't imagine not doing it. To me, that makes too much sense. Plus, Don Callis is, is, is you know, strong and creative, and Don Callis wants to be Bobby Heenan with Nick Bockwinkel with the champ on that, on that TV. So, um, I mean, I, th- I would think that that's inevitable. Um, the one thing is, is that when Kenny Omega was in with Rich Swan, it was really fucking good. And I think that their singles match will probably be great. Rich Swan's so talented anyway. So it'll be like Rich Swan's been in with a lot of good people and everything, but but you know, it's just a step it's just a step above. I mean, it was watching this show tonight, it's like, you know, everything's fine and all that. And then when those guys got in the six man, um, like the very first spot practically, it's it was just like, Oh my god, these guys are so much better than everybody else on the show. Like it was, um, it was actually with with um, was it uh, Chris Sabin and Carl Anderson who started? Yeah, Sabin and Anderson started, and they were great. Yeah, but it's like it's like oh, um, you know, it's like those two guys were in there. It's like oh my god, these guys are like a level above everybody else on the show. It was like, it's like I don't I don't want to say minor league versus major league, but boy, it it was it was just such a difference in 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 caliber, and then. Um, when Omega was in, then it was another another step up, especially when he was in with, with Swan. But he worked well with Saban, and he actually worked great with Moose. Dude, best, Moose was so good in this match. His best Moose match of his life. Like, you bro. expect, you know, Rich Swan and Saban and Good Brothers and Omega. And, of course, Moose wasn't even supposed to be in the match. So he replaces Alex Shelley. He probably felt he had something to prove. And this dude was so good in this match. Yeah. Like, so good that even though everybody else was great, when the match is over, the guy I'm thinking, man, look at that guy. It was Moose. Well, they booked it They booked it to make Moose look good. The thing is... Well, is they like, did, but he also did, like, a run up the ropes into a Spanish fly spot. The Spanish the fly top. spot? That, that was, was so uh, awesome. Yeah, with his size. he he, he And he, he moves great, and everything he did look great, and he sold great. He was look, so good in this match. Yeah, well, he's dropped weight. 
and he's in great shape. Yeah, he was shredded in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's a great athlete. Like, I mean, he, he always had the great jumping ability and everything like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the one thing is, is that when you're in there with like Kenny Omega or the Young Bucks, I mean, we've seen it over and over and over again that all of a sudden, you know, these guys that are like really green, not saying Moose is green because he's been around for a while, but, but, you know, guys that may not be that good. I'm not saying he's not that good either, but all of a sudden they all look like, like tremendous workers because, these guys, you know, the one, you know, they, they they get credit for a lot of stuff by most people. And then some people won't give them credit for anything for whatever reason. God only knows why. But but the one thing that they don't get the credit for, all three of them, is that is their ability to make their opponents look good. Because you look at those guys, you know, any any of them, you know, it's like freaking, you know, Kenny Omega got made Alan Angels into a star by you know, selling for him for a minute and a half in a squash match. And, um, you know, it's just like that, that he, he's, you know, he made Rich Swan look like a freaking world beater. I mean, though, Rich Swan's super talented. And um, so I don't actually, do you know what the story is with Shelly? I don't know. I just know that he said that he did not have COVID, but for he, health reasons, he wasn't going to the show. He could not go on the plane. But I don't know what the story was, and they would not tell me anything more than that, and he wouldn't say anything more than that. And there are people who would want to tell me, and they just said like they couldn't. So it was very weird, honestly. It was a very weird reaction. Um, but but um, yeah, so that that's what happened, and it was it was yesterday because we were actually thinking of doing an interview with Shelley on Friday. Um, and it fell through because he was going to be traveling the only time that we had free. And then he obviously wasn't traveling at all. So they had a good long match, and everyone had a chance to shine. Everybody looked good. Everybody worked great together. And great near fall on Omega. Uh, Moose and Swan hit a doomsday device on Omega, and Swan covers him, and Don Callis is just losing his mind because he thinks he's going to lose this match, but he kicked out. And lots of counters to the one-winged angel. And finally, Gallows and Anderson hits one with the magic killer. Moose broke it up. Omega got rid of Moose, hit the V-trigger, one-winged angel, pinned Rich Swan. So, yeah, looks like the next pay-per-view is probably going to be that championship match. But we shall yeah. see. Very good well, match. Yeah, it's probably like uh, Callus with the uh, the Bob Backlund, uh, Nick Bockwinkel match in, in Toronto. Um, way back in like 79 or whatever year that match was, you know, um, but yeah, that, that, uh, that type of thing where champion versus champion, um, I mean, it's cool. You know, I, 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 I think that it makes, um, you know, makes uh, puts more eyes on the product and everything like that. There's definitely more interest in impact than there's been. I mean, I'm sure this pay-per-view will be, you know, much bigger than the last pay-per-view they did. Hey, if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.